Coming up on Mountain News this morning, an iconic bourbon distillery here in the Commonwealth finally reopens its doors. And Kentucky hunters will soon have the chance to win the right to bag a big prize. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Hey, welcome to Friday. Let's say that again. Friday, it's May 13th, Friday the 13th, but that's okay, right? 533, Jim Freeman in, glad you're in, and Brandon Robinson's in with, uh, well, maybe a little rain in the forecast, Brandon? That's right. Friday the 13th sounds like a Stevie Wonder song, <laughs> Superstition. <laughs> oh, there you go. So there you go, and it's his birthday <laughs> today, by the way, oh. so that's a good fun, little fun fact for you, but again, you're right. The rain is going to be on the way here a little bit later on today. We're going to continue to see chances for that later but not right now. Let's take a look at our camera network, US 119, US 23, over at Pineville, near Pineville Commons, and not a whole, of, a whole lot of issues over there right now. Dry and calm and quiet. Temperatures in Pineville, 64 over there at the airport. 50 now in Clintwood, they continue to drop just a little bit there, but you're seeing a trend of low to mid 60s and upper 50s there, mid to upper 50s across most of the region. The coolest spots in the region, 55 at Wise and 50, as we mentioned, at Clintwood, 63 out toward Paducah, 70 in Louisville this morning. They were pretty warm. Cross the river in Cincinnati, they're at 56. Tri Cities at 59. Nashville at 67. 12 hour planner for today. We're heading up into the low 80s once again. Sunrise at 626, sunset at 834. And it looks like we made 82 yesterday at the National Weather Service office at Jackson. So we basically were a little bit, I think we were a degree colder, but London Corbin Airport got to 84. So that kind of balances it out in the grand scheme of things. Jim? Thanks, Brandon. Yesterday, Shannon Gilday appeared in a Madison County courtroom for an arraignment, but he will have to enter a plea next week. He's accused of breaking into former state representative Wesley Morgan's home and killing his daughter, Jordan. His attorneys wanted to enter a guilty but mentally ill plea for him, but that was pushed back by the judge. She ruled that she would not accept any plea yesterday. The prosecution does not want to accept the plea, saying it will cause issues as the case progresses. My fear is that because I, the, the Commonwealth then would ask for a sentencing hearing um, where um, life without the possibility of parole, life without parole for 25 years, and death would be on the table. Gilday will be back in court at 9 o'clock Monday morning for the arraignment to be continued. He's charged with murder, attempted murder, assault, and several other charges. We have an update on a Whitley County man who was convicted of violent kidnappings. 62-year-old George Oscar Messer was sentenced to life in prison on Wednesday. Messer was convicted by a federal jury of two counts of kidnapping in January of this year. Messer and co-conspirators held two victims for around 24 hours. The victims were interrogated, threatened, and assaulted. They only escaped after a family member spotted them in a ditch on the side of the road with Messer. Twelve people were arrested for allegedly being involved in a Louisville-based drug trafficking operation. The DEA, along with local police, seized nearly 10,000 diverted oxycodone pills and more than two million U.S. dollars. A federal grand jury indicted all 12 people for working together, along with others, to distribute the drugs in Madison, Estill, Clay, and Laurel counties between September 2019 and March 2022. Each defendant faces up to 20 years in prison and a maximum fine of $1 million. Firefighters in Richmond are working to find out what caused a house fire. The fire broke out just after 6 o'clock Thursday morning. Investigators say the home was vacant and was severely damaged. Mayor Robert Blythe says the house on Maple Street was the home that belonged to who he believes was the city's first black nurse. He says Julia Evans and her husband John once lived there when he was in junior high and that the home means a lot to him. For me, historic, as we're talking at least 60, 70 years, and it was here before I was. The woman who now owns the home, a woman owns uh, the home now, Mayor Blythe says she will check out the home to see if anything is salvageable. An iconic Kentucky bourbon distillery is reopening. Governor Andy Bashir was there for the festivities at the James B. Beam Distillery in Bullitt County. It's a $45 million project, and it celebrates the Beam family's 225-year legacy in the bourbon industry. The governor also talked about how the bourbon trail and facilities are drawing people to the Commonwealth. Bourbon trail and facilities like this are bringing millions of people to Kentucky every single year. 
They are showing the best of what we have, and you're seeing it in your communities more and more each year. The distillery is open Wednesday through Sunday. Tours and experiences can be booked online. The grand opening for Ollie's and Hazard has been announced. The Ollie's website shows the opening date for the Hazard location to be Wednesday, June the 8th. It will be located just a block off Gold, Black Gold Boulevard, just down the, the road from WYMT. And it's uh, right next to Hibbett Sports, where the old Good Gordmans and Goodies used to be. The Louisville Zoo's Butterflies and Blooms exhibit opens Saturday. Visitors will be able to walk amongst hundreds of native butterflies, sipping nectar from colorful flowers in a 1,000 square foot outdoor flight house. Include the, included in the exhibit, guests can learn about and witness the life cycle of the butterfly beginning as a caterpillar. The seasonal exhibit is free with zoo admission. And back here in our region, it's Main Street Week in London. London Downtown and First National Bank of Manchester are putting on Burger Week, celebrating downtown restaurants and eateries and bringing the community together. WYMT's Jade Saylor talked with those in charge about what the week includes. Burger Week is happening in downtown London. Those in charge of the event are encouraging community members to get out and support participating venues. Each day we have some different themes that we just throw out there for folks. Today is Take Me Out Thursday, so get out, shop, walk the, walk the streets. Our downtown in London is gorgeous. Celebrating downtown restaurants and eateries as a fun yet different way to grow the local economy. It helps put them out there. It helps um, to make people think, oh, come downtown. I can come downtown. There are seven businesses participating in the week going all out with signature recipes. And I think the restaurant owners have all enjoyed getting to kind of stretch their culinary muscles and, and be creative. Even the pizza restaurant, Sauced, created a burger themed pizza to get in on the fun. Sauced has a bacon cheeseburger pizza, which has just been a phenomenal hit. It's, it's been very creative and well received. Everyone is invited to gather at the park Friday for a special treat. Tomorrow, uh, the main event that will be downtown is a Pops in the Park concert brought to everyone by the South Laurel bands. The Abbey, Butcher's Pub, Local Honey, Weavers on Fourth, Sauced, and the Grind Bluegrass Bakery are participating. In London, Jade Sailor, WYMT, Mountain News. Thanks, Jade. London Downtown and First National Bank of Manchester both recently won Kentucky Main Street Awards. The Mountain Arts Center is preparing to host the 2022 Elk Hunt Draw. Officials with the MAC say nearly 80,000 hunters entered for a chance to win a tag last year and expect the same or even more this year. MAC Executive Director Joe Campbell says it's always amazing when someone at the event wins a tag. It's very, it's extremely rare to get one. So it's, it's when somebody does get it, it it's, uh, it's a joyful occasion. Only 594 tags are available and folks across the country and even around the world enter the drawing each year. There will be no triple crown winner this year. The Kentucky Derby winning horse, Rich Strike, will not race in this year's Preakness Stakes. Owner Rick Dawson says that he wants to give his horse more recovery time and rest. Dawson says he does plan on running Rich Strike in the Belmont Stakes on June the 11th. Just ahead this morning, the daughter of a rock and roll legend goes through some changes as she prepares to welcome a bundle of joy into the world. And drag the umbrellas back out because after a nice stretch of days, some of you may need them this afternoon. Our latest forecast. Afternoon.